Radiation alert. A nuclear scientist tells us the cleanup at Japan's Fukushima plant could take a hundred years. Six years on from the disaster, we'll ask what happened to dreams of an atomic age. I'm Martin Stanford. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. The head of the International Atomic Energy Agency has called on the world to help in the clear-up of Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. When a huge earthquake and tsunami hit the site in 2011, it created the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl, sparking meltdowns in three reactors. Six years on and the decommissioning process has barely begun. A British nuclear scientist who's just come back from Fukushima has told this program it could take up to a hundred years. Insight senior correspondent Dana Lewis reports. In three years, Tokyo will host the Summer Olympics. And ironically, one of the commercial slogans asks, is Japan cool? It would almost be funny if the situation wasn't so serious. 150 miles from Tokyo is the Fukushima nuclear power station where the situation is not cool. It's a superheated atomic catastrophe ever since a powerful earthquake rattled Japan in 2011. A 15 meter tsunami engulfed Fukushima and caused three reactors to melt down. And they still are. It's unknown where those cores are at. It's hoped, and Tokyo Electric is very optimistic about this, that it's still contained within the containment structures, even though it's burrowed into the containment structures in the foundations. But there is some possibility that it's burrowed completely through the containment, is sitting in groundwater. It's hard to get a clear picture of what's happened inside the building because an army of robots has been killed trying to probe the damage, killed by radiation that melts their electronics. But we know this, one camera lasted long enough to show molten fuel debris had burned through the bottom of the inner reactor vessel. And incredibly, radiation levels are now the highest they've been since the triple core meltdown six years ago. None of that is good. Deep inside Fukushima, there is a molten mess, which is essentially a radioactive soup of fuel rods and melted reactor cores. But exactly how deep are those cores? And that is a burning question. These close-up photographs show that it has burned through some of the containment structure and burrowed deep in the foundation of the reactor. Until those cores can be retrieved, the radiation will keep spewing into groundwater and leaking. No one knows for sure where. Some of that groundwater flows into the Pacific Ocean, radioactively contaminated. And as far away as the American Pacific Coast, there have been radiation levels found in fish and radiation plumes have been tracked from Japan that have been detected on the shores of Oregon and in tuna caught nearby. Neil Hyatt is a professor of nuclear materials chemistry. He and a group of British scientists have come back from touring Fukushima. Well, at least the storage areas where radiation levels are high but not lethal. And he admits the situation will haunt Japan for generations. Somewhere between 40 and 100 years, uh, for the Fukushima cleanup and complete decommissioning is probably a reasonable estimate. So right now, uh, the work is proceeding um, to target and to plan, um, and uh, they have a, an ambitious goal to retrieve uh, the, some of the core material uh, by 2020, and um, uh, they have a lot of different approaches to doing that. But while they plan to get to those cores, Tokyo Electric is struggling with a lethal radioactive dragon which emits radiation levels which can kill a person in less than a minute. They manage the situation by pumping water non-stop through the three reactors to cool melted fuel too hot and too radioactive to move. 400 tons of water each day passes through the reactors and then decontamination filters and then into storage tanks which are stacking up and up. 1,000 tanks now hold 920,000 tons of contaminated water. More tanks are being added and they are running out of room to store them all. One concern is that there could be a resumption of the nuclear chain reaction and there are systems in place that would allow us to 
uh, to detect that and, and take appropriate measures. And what if the unthinkable happens? Another earthquake. Japan is susceptible to major earthquakes. Another tsunami hits that site. The entirety of that wastewater, which is something like a million tons, could go into the ocean. This is an unprecedented catastrophe for the Pacific Ocean. And there are 3.5 billion gallons of contaminated soil sitting in thousands of plastic garbage bags stacked up in neat rows in the fields and abandoned towns surrounding the site. Japan's former prime minister has accused current prime minister Shinzo Abe of lying about the situation being under control. And Abe is widely criticized for encouraging 6,000 residents around Fukushima to return to their homes and many won't go back. Even if we come back here, we won't be able to work in the fields. We won't be able to grow rice. We won't be able to pick the wild vegetables either. It will be the same for seafood and river fish. There are no positives. Every time it rains, every time the wind blows, every time leaves fall off trees, that severe radioactive contamination is washing down from the mountains, into the rivers, into the ocean. This is a part of the landscape now, and these places should not be lived in, and yet Abe is trying to force people back into these contaminated zones. The Japanese government says Fukushima will be safe by 2020. It will hold the Olympic baseball and softball in the Fukushima area to show Japan is cool, even if its melted reactors are still dangerously hot. I'm Dana Lewis, reporting for Insight. Well, to discuss that, I'm joined in the studio by Mark Whitby. He's chairman and design director at the engineering consultancy firm WME. And also by Dr David Lowry, an independent research policy consultant specialising in nuclear issues. Gentlemen, let's consider Fukushima. Um, Mark, this call came out for the world to help. Is it simply a matter if you throw money at the problem, they can make more progress? I think the world does need help and the world is helping. And it helped from the moment, fortunately, the accident happened. Um, you know, this, is a, this was an unprecedented accident. It was very close to being much worse than Chernobyl, and it was only saved through the collective efforts of, of the whole community. Um, there wasn't so much the reactor cores which were melting. There was nothing they could do to, to re retrieve that situation. The real problem was that the, one of the reactors had been recently taken offline. It had a fuel pond which was very hot, stacked with 20 years' worth of fuel rods, mm. and that was beginning to boil dry. And to begin with, they flew helicopter loads of water, dropping it in. Then they bought, brought in specialist fire uh, trucks to spray water onto the fuel tanks. Eventually, they brought in, flew in with uh, Russian, uh, the right, big Russian transport plane, um, huge concrete pumps, which were able to penetrate through the wall of the, the, uh, of the reactor, because the reactors had exploded by this time, um, get through the wall and drop water directly onto it, which kept the fuel pond um, from bo boiling. Now, had that fuel pond boiled, and, and uh, uh, President Khan was very aware of this, this would have been 12 Chernobyls. Because once that had caught fire, that, that pond had caught fire, it would be like a stick, uh, like a pile of hot sticks. You know, once yes. the water had gone, it would go. Uh, once that caught fire, nobody could access anywhere near the six nuclear reactors they had there. Yeah. And all of them would have actually eventually uh, failed. So that conflagration was avoided. Um, David, though, what collective effort could the rest of the world, if they pile in and help the Japanese, what can they usefully do now to speed up this process of recovery? Well, the first thing they should do is to discourage the Japanese government from reopening the existing 52 reactors which are closed down in the immediate aftermath. Jap Japan is a very uh, earthquake prone country. Uh, it's quite possible there could be another si si significant earthquake uh, in the near future and I think Japan can have its energy sources provided from other sources other than nuclear. You'd so, advocate they shut down the entire nuclear generation program? Well, the entire nuclear generation program bar two reactors is already shut down. I'm saying that the, yeah. ja the Japanese government would like to reopen it, as with the, some of the Japanese yes, nuclear they industry. They have what's at the moment called stranded assets. They have invested millions and millions and millions of pounds into the uh, construction and operation of these plants, and they're earning no revenue at all for the last six years. So you can see why they want to do it, but I don't think that's a good idea. The other thing that the, the, the uh, other uh, experts in the rest of the world can do is to try to help them on the cleanup of the radioactivity that got off site. 
Mm. We've heard about the leakage of water into the Pacific and why that might worry Americans on the west coast of the United States. But the radioactive contamination of the area around is very uh, damaging. Um, there was an evacuation of about 160,000 people. Uh, about half have gone back so far. Uh, the, the problem is that the, um, the agricultural land is contaminated. Uh, we had this buildup of uh, the scraping of the topsoil, which is radioactively contaminated, and all of these plastic sacks, which uh, are shown in the film. And the other problem is the psychological damage on the people who've been dislocated from the site. Mm. And there's been a number of studies been done into that. And some people even say that for some people, like very old people, it would be better not to evacuate them because the dislocation to their lifestyle, their community networks and so on, was worse than the effects of them catching, um, being exposed to radioactivity and getting cancer. Okay, number of issues there. Let's try and unpick some of them. Uh, the, on the engineering side, Mark, they did try this ice wall, didn't they? They've they spent billions of yen trying to create this barrier to contain contaminated water. It still leaks, It I still hear. leaks. It's, it's, a, it's obviously, you know, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. They've got a... Uh, they're trying to isolate the, yeah. the base of the reactors to stop the groundwater, which literally flows off the ground into the sea right underneath the reactors. And, the, and these reactors are now leaking um, really high levels of radiation into that water. Now, that water then goes out into the sea and is r relatively diluted. We yeah. know that you know the fish are getting contaminated. You know that's that, in a sense of all. Is that things, not a priority in your view? It, it is, in many respects, it's it's a priority, but it's not the priority. I mean, in a way, we are very lucky that, that this radiation is going into the sea. Now, it, it's a vast amount, but the Pacific is a very large ocean and it's diluting. So, what's higher up your list of what they should do next? Well, I mean, they're trying to get inside these reactors. We heard about the robots going in there to assess them. I mean, is there any more they can do there? Well, they've, it's, they've got to try and con develop a program for actually containing everything and, yeah. and sealing the reactors so the water they're putting in there to cool it. Because the moment they're putting, out, I think, 400 tonnes of water a day go, goes into yeah. each reactor... That, that creates another out. problem, doesn't well, it? Well, that comes out, it's contaminated. Contaminated water. And they recycle parts of it, you know, <coughs> to recool it, and the rest of it goes into the tanks. Um, they're now getting to the point where they are beginning to talk about wanting just to drop the tanks into the ocean because they just can't keep building, you know, a, a, you know these these tanks to keep the place cool. And, David, can they not build... I mean, let me put it in simple layman's terms. Is there not a possible to put, construct some kind of structure, concrete or whatever it is, as big and as solid as it needs to be to bury this whole site for a generation or more well, that's so everything is contained? That's exactly what they've done twice now at Chernobyl. They did a temporary one in the immediate aftermath of the accident in 1986. Yeah. And last year they completed the, the refurbishment with a giant, like a giant cow shed over the top of it, costing, I don't know, millions and millions and millions. And did that pounds. work, in your view? Is that a, a sensible engineering task to well, undertake? They have the same problem in Chernobyl as they have in, in Japan, in that the, they are concerned about radioactivity getting into the water. In the case of, of Ukraine, it's into the river system, which feeds down into Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Yeah. So they don't want that to happen. So putting a big containment over the top stops radioactivity going into the air, but it doesn't necessarily stop radioactivity getting into the groundwater. In Japan, it's a different situation. They do want to stop it getting into the air. And if they're going to continue to keep cooling it down, they will get leakage into the, into the runoff and into the ocean. The other thing that should be made stressed about this is that in that particular Fukushima design, they put the spent fuel storage pond, as was mentioned, it's high up off the ground. And they're very lucky that the earthquake didn't destroy the... the, the, the um, Containment vessels for that, yes, yeah. Con didn't destroy the, the support system for that, because if that had crashed down completely, it would be even worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, they should be looking at all the other reactors. I'm sure there are more reactors with their spent fuel storage ponds high up off the ground. And they also need to have off-site um, alternative operating systems. In the case of the Fukushima, they didn't have the system separated out from the main plant so that they couldn't remotely operate the plant with people off-site. And it's a major design fault. I, I think these have now all become part of the reason why uh, the next generation of, generation of nuclear has become more expensive. I mean, size will A is, was, was relatively similar to one of these uh, power stations. It had a, it had a That was built pond. in the UK, wasn't it? In the it? UK. Yes. It was recently decommissioned, but its fuel pond was basically sitting in the open air. With, well, I say open air. It had yeah. a single skin of metal over the top of it. Right. Um, it was assumed that the water would stay in there, and, and uh, fortunately it did, and it's now been emptied. And they've now built, for size will B, they've built a, a very large... Um, uh, 
what's it called? It's a, it's a spent fuel processing, well, a containment area. It's, it's a, a dry storage. Dry storage. Piece. And then they couldn't, they wouldn't be operating size will be now if they hadn't been able to build that because the fuel pond there was acknowledged after Fukushima as being far too full and okay. very prone if there was an accident to catching fire. Well, we'll continue our conversation about that worldwide impact in just a moment. You're watching Insight. We were once promised the atomic age would solve all our power problems. So what is the future for nuclear power?